Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering animal art. Continuing my pet portrait commission series, today we'll be focusing on technique, where I'll be showing you how to paint realistic curls using acrylic paint. All right, guys, let's get started. So I'm currently working on a two dog pet portrait of Teddy on the left and Baby on the right. Their fur is very similar, but also very different. Baby has tighter, shorter curls, whereas Teddy has curls that are a bit straighter, longer, and more brown in color. The technique I'm about to go over is great for breeds with tight or loose curls, such as your standard poodle, labradoodles, Spanish water dogs, pumis, barbettes, Bichons, even Selkirk Rex cats. First, dogs with tighter curls, as I'm demonstrating right now on the limbs of the right dog, that's baby, I start by using the medium values first, not my darkest colors like I normally preach with acrylics. I use a medium gray that is lighter than the darkest grays in baby's coat, but darker than the highlights. So I'm using a number two Arteza Filbert brush with my medium gray, I create short lines and dots placed closely together and going in all different directions. I let that dry for a little bit while I move to another area of the dog, but you can see I still leave some areas white between the lines and these dots, which is where I'll later add my highlights and then my lowlights. Now I'm not copying every curl that I see in the reference photo. I'm actually kind of doing my own thing, but still taking color and shape cues from my reference photo. Then once I've laid down a very generous layer of my medium values, that's when I move to my lighter values. Now, not my light test highlights, okay, but a shade or two darker. I can still see them in between my medium values and they're lighter, but they're still darker than my lightest highlights, okay? So in this case, for this painting, I just simply added white to create a light gray. I'll then work that light gray in between the medium values, especially the areas facing the light source or close to it. Then once I think I've applied most, if not all of my lighter values, not my lightest values, then I'll move to my dark values. Now I'll go through multiple rounds of my dark, medium, light. That's one round and I'll do that multiple times to make it look more three-dimensional. Now curls will clump together and lay in different directions. It's with my dark and light values that I focus on defining these different clumps of curls. I'll use darker values to create curl separation and define the curl clumps, whereas I'll use my lighter values to create curls that are raised up or exposed to more light. Now it's at the very end when I add my lightest lights and my darkest darks to really bring out those details and make it look more realistic. For baby on my right, I'm just using white as my lightest lights, but sometimes for your dog, it may be a really bright yellow or it may be a medium gray and that's the lightest lights that you'll have on your black dog or something. It depends on that breed. It depends on the light source. All right, so now let's talk about how to create looser curls. Teddy on the left has fur that's a little bit less bulky clumps. They're a little bit looser laying, and so we have a bit more individual curls to define on Teddy. I'll again start with my medium values. In this case, it's a medium gray with some added brown. The exact colors I'm using is white, black, burnt umber with a tiny bit of raw sienna. I'll place down just lines, not dots, because they're not as tight curls. These are curled lines going in all different directions and clustered closely together. Then I'll go in with my lighter values between them, followed by my darker values. Then at the very end, after I've done several rounds, that's rounds of dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, I'll add my darkest darks and my lightest lights. All right, so now that we covered how to create tight and loose curls, let's talk about the similarities between the two and what we'll do for both fur types. So 
on the very outside border of the dog, cutting into the background, I'll always have a little bit of the curl kind of curled out. So you see a little bump, but that's part of a curl. And then there'll be some parts that have the end of the first strand cutting into the background. So you'll just see a little bit of hair. Also for both fur types, as you're headed closer to those lightest colors, I recommend switching to a smaller brush like a detail round brush or a rigger brush or liner brush, especially if you're working with tighter curls or painting on a really small canvas. That's really when you wanna add those tiny details. Now the areas that you're really gonna see more of your shadows and those clumpy dark curls is around below the neck, below the chest and belly, that's around the eyes, under the ears, and sometimes around the mouth. Also, I really recommend getting the eyes, nose, and mouth done before applying the curls or the fur around those areas because you can see it's not that curly around baby snout. It's just more wavy and same with Teddy. And you have a darker shade of gray right around the snout before you apply that light gray or that light brown fur around it. So you definitely want to make sure you get the face, so the nose, mouth, and eyes done and that dark base around those areas and then start creating the fur over top. This type of fur I find really challenging but in a fun way and it's very time consuming. So make sure, guys, really make sure that if you're doing this as a commission or for yourself to have some good quality photos. Photos that give you all the information you need about how the curls sit, how large or small these curls are, how tight they are or loose, how full they are, and the color. Now I'm still currently working on this commission. It's kind of a very complex one with these puppies laying in a poppy field. It's gonna be great. So I'll make sure I post the final thing on my YouTube channel as well as on my social media, Facebook and Instagram. Now if you'd like to learn more about how to paint cats or dogs, or get a hold of my new upcoming Pet Portrait Commission course, you can check out my online Animal Art Masterclass link below. This course will be ready on December 15th of this year, which will include the exact Pet Portrait Commission contract template that I use that I'm giving students, the pricing formula that I use, and my 10-step Pet Portrait Commission process. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a blessed day. Bye.